Hello, my name is Alexander Walch and I work at the Machine Vision Department at ProFactor. ProFactor is a research company in Austria and in the Machine Vision Department we develop sensors for non-destructive testing. Our sensors are mainly employed in the automotive and aerospace industry. Today I am going to tell you something about the sensor that we developed to assess the surface of aircraft interior parts. <clears throat> In aircraft cabins there are often many similar parts mounted next to each other. Here the homogeneous appearance of their surfaces is important. Therefore, a method to assess the surface properties is needed that is similar to the human perception. <clears throat> Here we see the hatch of an overhead bin. It represents a typical part that needs to be assessed. Its surface properties are determined by its coating. <clears throat> the two images on the left side are grayscale recordings of such a coating. Different surface properties result in different textures in these images. The upper image, for example, shows a coarser surface, which is indicated by the larger structures in the texture. <clears throat> the requirements on the sensor design can be split into two categories. There are standard requirements. Um, for example, the field of view must be large enough to acquire enough information about the texture. It must be possible to assess also curved, curved surfaces. <clears throat> and there won't be an automated positioning system. So it must be possible for a human to acquire reliable and reproducible results with the sensor. <clears throat> there are also soft requirements which depend on the human perception. The results of the sensor must be similar to the, to the surface assessment of humans. Uh, the two reference samples for the coarseness of the surface only represent the coarsest and finest allowed surfaces. <clears throat> uh, and for the sensor, for the calibration of the sensor, there are only samples available which are scored by experts. Therefore, the calibration depends on the human perception of the surface. In this presentation, we focus on the soft metrology. Some facts about the sensor. <clears throat> it has a field of view of 15 times 15 millimeters. Uh, and the measurement can be performed in under one second. That includes the image acquisition as well, the image, as, well as the image processing. Um, we acquire eight image per measurement. The sensor is able to assess the gloss and the coarseness of the surface. But on the next slides, we will focus on the computation of the coarseness, since here the soft metrology, that means the human perception is involved. <clears throat> the computation of the coarseness is based on three handcrafted features. The first feature is the Tamura coarseness a well-known texture feature that computes the coarseness by measuring the size of the structures of the texture. It turned out that this feature alone is not able to explain the coarseness perceived by the expert, and so two additional features were added. We count the number of brightness peaks in the image. Coarse, coarse surfaces tend to have fewer larger peaks compared to fine surfaces. And the third feature is the contrast at depth peaks. Uh, the contrast tends to be higher at coarse surfaces compared to smooth surfaces. These three features must then be mapped to, to a coarseness value that agrees with the perception of some experts. The computation of this mapping is done in a calibration step. Here the problem is that the experts need physical samples for their assessment. 
So it's not possible to somehow generate training data as it is sometimes done at deep learning approaches. As a result, there is only a very small set of ground truth data available and at the same time, the relation between the features and the human perception might be quite complex. Since there is uh, additionally a very high expectation on the accuracy of the match between the sensor and the experts, the risk of overfitting is quite high. <clears throat> we use Gaussian process regression to get control over the variability of the function that maps the features to the coarseness. It has the advantage that a very good match at the ground truth samples can be ensured and the behavior of the function between these samples can be influenced by the parametrization of the covariant functions. <clears throat> we used 13 samples to compute the aforementioned mapping, mapping of the features. The plot on the right side shows the sample ID on the x-axis and their coarseness values along the y-axis. Each sample was assessed by four experts and the black dots represent the mean value of their scores. The variation between the coarseness scores of the experts is visualized by the vertical lines and the samples are sorted from the smoothest to the coarsest sample according to the mean score. The reference sample of the smoothest and coarsest allowed, surface, uh, allowed surfaces are the samples number 7 and 12. Uh, they also serve as the anchor points for the coarseness scale, which values of 10 for the lowest and 20 for the highest allowed coarseness. Since the experts knew the reference samples, they all agreed uh, on their score, which explains why the variance at sample 7 and 12 is that low. Um, also, some of the samples were scored smoother than the reference samples of the lower coarseness bound and one sample was coarser than the upper bound. <clears throat> the resulting map from the feature space to the coarseness value was evaluated in two ways. The left table shows the model bias. For each sample, we compute the absolute value of the difference between the mean expert score and the prediction of the algorithm. The mean of the 13 absolute errors is only 0.32. And the right table shows the model variance. Here we use the leaf on out method that is a common cross validation method in machine learning to test the model. The model was trained 13 times. One sample was removed from the ground truth dataset at each training run, and this sample was predicted afterwards. The mean error of that predictions can then be used as a measure for overfitting. The value of 2.39 is clearly larger than 0.32 of the model bias. However, it is still in the range of the variances of the expert scorings. We also evaluated the overfitting by means of plots of the feature mapping. The data in which we are interested is four dimensional. There are three features plus the computed coarseness values. Therefore, we evaluate the mapping with fixed values for the peaks and contrast feature. They were set to their mean value of the training's data. <clears throat> and the only remaining degree of freedom is the Tamura coarseness. The dots, in the, figures, <coughs> the dots in the figure represent the samples of the training data. We basically see the projections of the samples, which explains the large deviations of the mapping from the training's data. However, the mapping is smooth and even allows good predictions outside the space that is covered by the training samples. We showed uh, that uh, Gaussian process regression in combination with handcrafted feature, features 
is well suited to model complex relationships. The presented methodology of sensor calibration also works well for a small set of ground truth data, complex models, and if, the ac if an accurate fit through the training data is required. <clears throat> it turned out that it is a useful methodology to model the human perception in technical systems. I hope you enjoyed the presentation and that the presented methodology can be applied in your future projects.